Right, I'm making a video about um, defence spend, spending and uh, the, the procurement process of buying kit for the Army, the Air Force and the Navy. Um, basically, our defence spending and procurement is a, is a joke, you know. When you look at projects in the past um, that the MOD has um, tried to buy stuff, there's numerous sort of projects where... Um, you, you know, they've overpaid for stuff or they've bought stuff that, that they couldn't use and things like that. And um, one of the biggest um, things that come to mind was the Nimrod um, AEW project. So this was airborne early warning aircraft for the RAF. The RAF had our Avro Shackletons that dated back to sort of like the 19... 50s or 1940s, late 1940s, 1950s, uh, as an airborne early warning aircraft. They needed a replacement, so they went to um, uh, BAE Systems or British Aerospace at the time, and um, British Aerospace said, "Oh yeah, we will, uh, we'll, we'll build that for you," and um, basically took a Nimrod and put two big bulges on each end, radars in them. And said, uh, right, you know, we'll we'll have this. Uh, we'll get you an early warning aircraft. Uh, and the 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 government spent one billion pounds on these. I think they built eleven aircraft. These eleven aircraft, early warning aircraft, uh, for the RAF, and they didn't work. And they couldn't get them to work. Um, and they ended up scrapping them and buying. Um, uh, early warning aircraft, uh, AWACS aircraft from uh, from America because they couldn't get them to work and they wasted a £1 billion. Now, you know, our, I think our armed forces budget is um, similar to the Israeli um, armed forces budget, right? Um, and the Israelis have about a 1,000 people doing um, uh, the, the procurement of kit. So they buy stuff from the Americans, they make some of the stuff themselves, um, but they've basically got, you know, a thousand civil servants buying this kit, right? The UK has got 30,000 um, civil servants dossing about doing the same job. Um, and that's how we get ourselves in, in, in these problems sort of thing. And we buy things that, that, that are useless or not appropriate appropriate for what we need. Um, as I say, the, at the minute, you know, the, the sort of the, the things at the minute that are no good are these aircraft carriers. Now, back in the day, um, the Labour government decided they wanted to build two aircraft carriers and they started work on the aircraft carriers, but they didn't know what aircraft they were going to put on them, right? So they they, they basically thought, well, right, don't worry about that. We'll build the ships and then we'll worry about that later. So they built these ships and they normally, you know, a, uh, an, an aircraft carrier, you would have a catapult and you would have an arrestor gear. So you can have a steam catapult, shoot shoot a jet off the front and then recover it at the back with arrestor gear and that slows it down so it can land sort of thing, a conventional aircraft. Um, but because we built the ships with no without that, we had to have the F thirty five B, which we bought off the which we eventually bought off the Americans to put on these ships, and um, basically the, the, it's like a, um, a Vistol aircraft that, that that it can land, it can take off vertically and it can land vertically or it can do a short rolling takeoff or a short rolling uh, landing right but it's got a very limited range it's only got a um, range of 450 nautical miles right um, and to be to really to be honest it, it's it, it's not any good uh, for, for what it's designed for um, the aircraft as well are um, shared with the RAF so, so like um, it's like a joint force thing. So the RAF they they've got these um, F thirty five Bs, and I think one of the squadrons is the Dambuster Squadron, the famous squadron that dropped the the bouncing bomb during the Second World War. But what I'm saying is, them aircraft have got such short range 
you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't get him anywhere you know you'd be all right if you thought to yourself i'm gonna launch an attack and i, and I need to bomb the isle of man or something like that you might be in with a chance but you, you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't get them anywhere because of the because of the short range they've got um as well these ships obviously because they didn't have the catapults and they didn't have the arresting gear um basically you, they haven't got any decent you can't put a, a uh, an early warning aircraft on the ship so the american ships uh, and the french uh, aircraft carriers um, they use e e3 hawkeye uh aircraft which is like a, a turboprop two propeller aircraft and it's got a big dish on the top which is a radar um which 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 flies really high and uh, it can detect enemy aircraft from hundreds of miles away so you can you know detect an enemy and then you can send your jets up to shoot the enemy down before it gets near the ship but we haven't got that all we've got is like a crappy uh, merlin helicopter which can't fly very high because it's a helicopter <clears throat> and it's got like a it's got like a little radar dome on the bottom which looks like dusty bin um and, and that's what we're using because we haven't got any um, catapults or arresting gear do you know what i mean so really all in all it's a it's a it's um it's a a sad state of affairs um you know the, the thing is what happens with the aircraft is aircraft are so expensive we end up having less and less and less of them uh, i watched uh and tanks and ships and and whatever um i, I watched a um i watched a video yesterday on youtube and um somebody put this video on and they were they were they were talking about the virtues of the new uh, Challenger 3 tank going, oh, the Russians need to be scared because we've got this new uh, Challenger 3 tank. Um, but, but you know, in reality, um, the Challenger 3 is, is, is a Challenger 2 tank where all they're doing is changing the gun, uh, and putting, putting a smoothbore gun in, um, and they're using the old chassis and the old bodywork sort of thing. Um, I think I, I did make some notes. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think the, the the Challenger two tanks we had we had two hundred and twenty seven. Now these new Challenger three tanks we're only getting one hundred and fifty eight. So what happens is as equipment becomes more expensive, we get less and less equipment. So what I'm saying, if you can imagine, um, you know, going back twenty years ago. You know, we probably have 500 frontline fighter jets, or yeah, maybe later than that. It may be 60s, 70s. You know, they go, how many jet fighters have you got? Oh, we've got 500 different types, right? And then we get to, to now, um, and we're supposed to have, I think we're supposed to have two 200 um, Typhoon Eurofighters. That's what we're supposed to have, 200 Typhoons. But we've actually only got... 100 in airworthy condition right so that's what if you were fighting a war that's what you would end up with 100 in, in airworthy condition that's what we've got right and what i'm saying is you know in in 20 years time um as the next generation fighter gets more expensive we'll have we'll have 100 we'll buy 100 of the new tempest fighter and then we'll have 50 in in operational service so what i'm saying is equipment gets dearer we have less and less and less that's what happens um but what i'm saying is it, it's it's like having there's there's a there's a sort of doctrine which says are you better off having um you know two or three cheaper fighters as opposed to one more expensive fighter um a lot of it has to do with the pilot training you know if you've got a really good pilot you can probably get away with um having you're better off having two or three cheaper aircraft than having one aircraft do you know, do, do you know what i'm saying that's that's the uh, the idea uh, and basically well, what i want to sort of sort of um, talk about is these um yemeni rebels you know so we've got these yemeni rebels who we've been bombing and uh, they've been sending typhoons from um, Cyprus to bomb these Yemeni rebels, right? Now, these Yemeni rebels, uh, they're living in tents, you, you know, whatever, in, in the fields, living in tents. They haven't got any aircraft. They've got no anti-aircraft to, to shoot anything down. They might have a few shoulder-launched 
uh, missiles, right? But they haven't, they haven't really got anything. And we're sending typhoons uh, and we're dropping really expensive bombs on them, yeah. Um, you know, we don't need to do that. We could have bombed them Yemeni rebels with a Lancaster bomber. You know what I mean? That, that, if, we'd have, if we'd have done the high-level bombing, we could have done that. And what I'm saying is... In reality, you know, we could have got a uh, we could have got a Hercules transport aircraft, right? We could have um, just put a load of junk in the back, probably a few second-hand cars. You know, when they were doing the the car scrappage scheme, and uh, all these uh, cars were on airfields, right? So we could get a get a Hercules, load it up with two or three Toyota Hiluxes, fly over to Yemen, just push them out the back of the Hercules on the tents of these Yemeni. Uh, these the Yemeni troublemakers and just just get them like that. But what what I'm saying by this, I know this sounds ridiculous, but what I'm saying like this is we we don't need we would have been better off with two or three different aircraft types and having a cheaper aircraft. We could have had older aircraft um, to to do that bomb dropping. You know, like the Russians are still flying like these bare bombers which are like 1950s and stuff like that, you know. We could, we could have been doing that and we could have had more pilots ch ch trained and we could have had a lot more aircraft, do you know what I mean? But instead of that, we, we sort of pay BA systems um, mega money and we, we have to have the most advanced fighter in the world um, and, and, and it's just like bankrupts the, the country, where in reality you'd be better off having more cheaper aircraft or keeping old, older, older aircraft types when you're doing things like bombing um, uh, Yemeni rebels, you know. Um, so that's, that's just my, um, my, my quick rant on, um, uh, you know, defence procurement and uh, defence spending. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like and subscribe. Okay, cheers. Bye.